yourself shouting at your children. Maybe your children don't listen until you yell. Maybe they shout at you and stomp off, which only makes you want to shout back. Maybe you are frustrated and overwhelmed and something like spilt milk or a lost shoe just sets you off with the feeling of it's too much and you shout. Is there a mama who has not shouted before at their kids? It happens, but that doesn't make it right or an acceptable way for us to approach our parenting. There are three better ways than shouting. Now we could start with our children and why they don't listen to us until we shout, but no. We are going to start here with us, Mama, because we are renewed mamas who want something more for ourselves and from ourselves so that we can be the best mamas we can be. We need to start by first self-regulating, checking in with us first. What am I feeling right now? What am I thinking? What do I want to say? Or what do I want to shout right now? Am I stressed, frustrated, overwhelmed, upset about something? And stepping on the Legos and the spilt milk and the flipped over plate that here comes the dog to gobble up all the good food. <laughs> the toy fight, cutting sister's hair, they're just triggers. Before you respond, before you shout or say anything, stop and get to the root of what is bothering you. Look for default responses. What do you always seem to say? How do you automatically respond? You just revert back to it every time. There have been so many times when something will happen with the kids and I stop and I'm thinking through all of these same questions that I'm suggesting to you. Oh, this is the last thing I need right now. We don't have time for this. We should have been out the door 10 minutes ago. This is so annoying. And one of them, you know, that's what I was thinking in my head. <laughs> Not saying anything yet because I stopped and paused, right? And one of them will say, Mommy, why are you looking at me like that? I must have been giving them the blank stare because I was doing that self-reflection. Okay, what am I thinking right now? What am I feeling? What I'm talking to myself, right? What does my child or my spouse need from me right now? What should I say? What do they need to hear instead of what I really want to say? How can I respond right in this? I didn't always do this. I'm working on being a renewed mama too because I want more for myself and from myself. I spent too many years just thinking and speaking without really paying attention. I took on judgment, criticism, and negativity, attacked Andrew, spewed my frustration at the kids, passed on my sense of being out of control of the situation, and it wasn't good. But through the renewing, of the Word of God in my life and some amazing mentors, I began intentionally checking in with my thoughts and the words I was saying. I wanted change. I wanted renewal. I didn't want the strife and the miscommunication. You know, in that uncomfortable air after an argument and you know that it wasn't really resolved? How about you? Do you want something more than this in your motherhood and in the atmosphere in your home? Wouldn't you rather prosper and have your home full of peace, honor, good communication, joy, and fun? You know, we can't control much of the world around us, including our toddlers and our teenagers and our spouses, but we can control how we respond. We can check in with ourselves and ask, what am I feeling right now? What am I thinking? What do I want to say or to shout? Am I stressed, frustrated, overwhelmed, upset about something? 
Is this just the trigger that's trying to set me off? Get to the root of what is actually bothering you and then ask, how will I choose to respond? I can choose right. I can respond right in this. If you need to tell your children, mommy is a little frustrated right now. I just need a minute because I don't want to pass my frustration on to you. I want to respond right in this moment. Or you could say, mommy's feeling a little overwhelmed right now. I could use your help. Would you be willing to do this for me? When we are frustrated and angry, we raise our voices. We can say things that we can't take back. We can ask for forgiveness and hope that our children and our spouse will forgive us. But remember, words aren't just spoken today in the moment. They are remembered in our thoughts when we are all alone, washing dishes or folding laundry. They are rehearsed as we replay situations and experiences in our minds. They are repeated when our children stomp off to their bedroom or sit in timeout. Those words continue to speak in our minds and in our thoughts. We make agreements with them or we reject them. What are you saying when you shout that you can't take back? Grab the free What's in Your Word Bank at speaklifebadges.com What's in Your Word Bank. Use the piggy bank as a way to count your words, not your pennies. <laughs> Write down the words you are thinking and speaking, especially in those moments when you want to shout. Look for repetition in your feelings and the words and the situations that are triggering you to shout. And then ask, how can I respond instead? What do I need to do about this other stress or overwhelm or pressure I have that I don't want to pass on to my children or my spouse? What do my children or my spouse need to hear instead of what I really want to say? Get this free What's in Your Word Bank at Speak Life Badges What's in Your Word Bank. Let me know if that helps. Tell me in the video podcast blog comments. I want to hear from you. When you mess up, ask for forgiveness. Say, please forgive me. I pass my frustration on to you. I shouted and that wasn't right for me to do. I take full responsibility for my actions. I was wrong and I hurt your feelings. Please forgive me. So self-regulating is one way, the most important, better way than shouting. Let's talk about two more better ways than shouting. Train your children. You may think that shouting will move them into action like a drill sergeant shouting out orders. You may think that shouting is faster at getting things accomplished than training them, teaching them how to get ready to go out the door, training them how to see a need and willingly lending a helping hand. But when you shout, you go from parent to peer. You step down to their level. Shouting also passes on shame. It belittles them. It makes them feel like they aren't good enough. They're afraid to make another mistake and not meet your approval. Why don't you listen the first time? Why do I have to tell you again and again? How could you be so stupid to do this? What were you thinking? How could you do this to me? No one wants to be shouted at. We are renewed mamas. We don't have to raise our voice to match theirs. We have the power to self-regulate and we have the power to train our children. Train them at a young age that you will speak once. Stop what you're doing, get down to their level if you need to and look them right in the eyes. Smile, say their name, give them one instruction. Billy, would you be willing to pick up all these toys before we go? We have just a few more minutes before we need to leave. Say it with honor, edification, and full belief that they will do it right away with a good attitude. Make sure that they clearly understand what is expected of them the first time that you ask. Encourage
encourage them to respond with, yes, mommy, I'll be glad to, to acknowledge that they heard you. You can ask, how will you help mommy before we go to make sure that they can explain back to you what they're being asked to do? And then edify them. Thank you. I'm so grateful for your help. I know that you will get these cleaned up quickly. I can count on you. Thank you for being such a good helper. You can award them with a Speak Life badge that says, I am a helper. If there is one gift that you could give your children today, it would be your words, chosen carefully and spoken well. The words you speak today are like seeds planted in their hearts and minds. These word seeds will sprout and bear fruit in their life as they grow and become adults. Use Speak Life badges, sticker award badges, along with suggested scripts, or words you can say in the situations you encounter with your children. These scripts are designed to help you to speak to your child's individual personality, to break lies they may be believing, and to help them to grow up with a truth-filled mindset. Get them today at speaklifebadges.com. If you turn around and the task isn't done yet, say, Billy, you are a good helper and you follow directions the first time I ask. Did you get distracted while cleaning up the toys? Let's do the rest of these together because we need to get going. How can mommy help you stay focused and get the job done next time? Speak belief, speak potential into your children. It can sound like, we have so much fun playing with our blocks. Now it's cleanup time. Let's work together to clean up all of these blocks. Let's do it like a game as fast as we can. Ready, set, go. I love you so much. You have loads of energy. Can mommy help you learn how to use your energy to have the most fun so that you don't get into trouble? Would you share with me what you were thinking when you chose to do that? How can I help you make the right choice next time? With practice, training, and encouragement, they will grow to keep their focus and get the toys cleaned up. If they do not follow directions or obey right away, follow through gently but firmly with appropriate consequences. I have the keys to your car. You did not mow the lawn this week. I hired a neighbor boy to do it. You owe me what I paid him to get the job done. There will be no karate until you do your schoolwork with excellence. And you will pay me the cost of your missed session. I asked you to do your morning chores. There will be no morning TV until you can do your chores each morning without being asked. There are consequences to their actions, just like there are consequences to mine and to yours. That may mean taking away a privilege such as iPad time or giving them an additional chore or not being able to stay up later to read in bed. That may mean missing out on a sleepover or not being able to play with a friend. Choose whatever is right for your family and what will motivate your child. There is no need to shout. No longer does your default reaction need to be frustration or shouting. And if you get kicked back or they get upset, you calmly say, the marketplace pays big money to someone who is faithful and trustworthy. Someone who when they promise or say that they will do something, they do it. An employer looks to hire a person who, when assigned a task, gets to work without delay and finishes it well, without needing to be checked on. I know that same faithfulness is in you. One more reason why there is a better way than shouting is safety. If there is an emergency, you need your children to obey immediately without question for their safety. You don't want them saying, ah, oh, there goes mom again. She's always shouting at me and then disregard the warning that you are giving them. There's a big difference between shouting, stop it, 
when there is danger versus when they're doing something annoying. Well, there you go. There's three better ways than shouting. Self-regulate. Mama, we are checking in with ourselves first before we speak, before we shout. Train your children to listen the first time and save your shout for a safety warning. Let me know what you do to help you when you feel like shouting. Go to speaklifebadges.com, the blog post, Three Better Ways Than Shouting. I would love to hear and to learn from you. Hit the like button and subscribe. If you like this episode, would you leave a review? I'd be honored if you would. And share this episode with another mama. That's what I care about the most. There is a better way than shouting. You can pause and check in with yourself to self-regulate. You can train your children in how to get out the door on time, how to get ready for school, how to help around the house, and how to clean up so that there's no need to shout. I bless you, Mama. Keep your mind strong and the words you speak pure, lovely, and good. Lots of love. I'll see you next time. Bye.